guys, very warm welcome back to the channel. So as promised, today we're going to be looking at some data from our autumn trip, um, which was last year, uh, to um, France. And um, Bob's drawn up some costs and um, out of all the locations that we stayed at. So um, we hope that it will be helpful to you as well if you're considering a similar type of trip. Indeed, yeah. Um, so when I'm a deep dive into the costs um, from a couple of angles, one sort of with some of the extras we got, but then also I've tried to uh, distill it down to a sort of essentials type cost as well, so hopefully that helps. Um, and uh, we'll have a dive and a walk around the spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. A fest, a spreadsheet fest. That's essentially what it is, yeah. Like a spreadsheet of a morning. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's have a look at the data. And before the heavens opened, we managed to strip out the beds. The cupboards are empty. The um, been under the floor here to drop out the um, drop out all of the water. So we've got on this one, we've got a double a double tap there. Um, and again, touch wood uh, or a bit of wood there. We've um, we've not had. We've not had any issues with the water or the pumping system, albeit that pump in there. I've actually now got in the back um, a full on spare pump just in case, because um, that would be a bit inconvenient if you lost all your water pump. The cupboards are bare, cleared out. Again, touch wood, definitely touch wood. We've not had any uh, rodent issues yet while the van's parked up on the drive. Um, but um, we do sort of try and clear out anything, I might even take the tea out, but we do sort of clear out anything that's in, uh, remotely resembles food, um, just in case. Um, but as I say, touching lots, we've not uh, not had rodent infestation yet, and <laughs> long may that continue. <laughs> Don't fancy that. Most of the drawers emptied out of all their bits and bobs. Don't think we've got any, don't think we've got any foodstuffs left. No, it's all looking pretty bare, isn't it? Ready for the next time. Beds all cleared out, stripped off at the top there. Yes, it is. It's one of those times where you're thinking, well, especially when it's, especially when it's doing that outside. Look at the state of that. Um, you start to think, well, where are we going next? Um, so of course, that is the question. Where will it be next? to perhaps escape some of some of this UK weather but in a weird way as well in a weird way as well it's actually quite nice to come back to some of the um, sub 30 degree temperatures and, uh, and not not, uh, not have to worry about uh, 400 litres of Sun Factor Billion sun cream which uh, as an ex-redhead um, I have to be <laughs> I have to use so uh, a bit of rain isn't a bad uh, is a bit of rain and temperature weather and the British winter fast approaching isn't too bad a thing so Peggy's mileage finished on 1277 after that latest tour again been absolutely fantastic I have to say been uh, Really, uh, really pleased we made that uh, decision to uh, upgrade from the uh, bikes, which are still up and running very well, um, uh, to the uh, scooters to take with us. It gave us so much more range. So, there we go with the um, final figures for the autumn adventure. So, uh, the van's, uh, gosh, coming up 20,000 miles now. Been absolutely touch wood, touch wood. Been absolutely fantastic. Um, on this um, this little French excursion, we've uh, done two four eight four miles in that uh, via back via the NEC for the motorhome show, and um, that's slightly less this time. We were in the Alps for a while and uh, all around Rocamadour and God knows where. So. Probably a bit more of a mountainous route, I think. But anyway, it's um, obviously with Peggy on the back, we were running for that tour at 26.5. Um, and in fact, while we're at it, let's just go around the clock to see what the overall... There we go, yeah. So 
that's what I actually set the uh, the distance A trip, so 18,800 miles ago, so almost the full life of the van. And in that time, we've been averaging 28.8, so that's obviously the first year was um, the electric bikes in the back, second year uh, travels was, or this year, 2023, was with Peggy, towing Peggy, um, so it's obviously brought the mileage down a little bit, but um, but still overall 20,000 miles, I'm uh, I'm more than happy with that. That's not a bad consumption rate at all, is it? Um, certainly, I'd uh, I'd trade that for some of those amazing views that um, that the van has allowed us to get round um, up and around those hills of Morzine and surrounding uh, and all those other beautiful areas of France that we've been to. Um, so yes, I think it's. Uh, I think overall, when you look at the data overall, which we'll have a look at in a minute, it's um, it works out pretty good value and probably as economical going abroad as it is to stay in the UK when uh, when you factor in uh, some of the fuel prices and cost of living and particularly the um, the campsite prices, which are so much less than the UK or, of course, zero, as you've seen. Um, yeah, some interesting data. Let's have a look at some of the other bits. So this trip, this autumn uh, adventure, uh, was September 2023, um, and I've broken it up into a sort of general costings overview, um, a travel itinerary. Now, that itinerary I've put onto two Google Map links. I couldn't put um, all of the stops on one Google Map. It doesn't let you... Uh, put more than about eight or nine stops so all of that itinerary which took us all the way around France and then of course at the end here we were we were into Gatwick you remember and then uh, into Birmingham for the NEC show um, so I've had to do it in two parts so hopefully the links in the description below the film will work if you're interested to have an overview of that um, they, uh, we generally, apart from that tiny bit of motorway as we headed towards Germany des Prés, um, that one we got onto by accident, the new style of motorway, um, we avoided tolls and motorways on uh, just about all of this trip, which was absolutely great. Um, and then in addition to, um, in addition to the other, those, those first two bits and bobs on the spreadsheet, I've just sort of tried to capture some of the grocery costs. We did a fair bit of dining out. In fact, it was about, gosh, it was about, it was about nearly 600 quid's worth of dining out. Good grief. Um, and, uh, well, you've got to do it, haven't you? But then groceries, some of our days out, including that amazing Chateau Valandry, the, the, um, the bus and the boat trips, um, Arcachon, um, the city bus tours in Bordeaux, and uh, of course that lovely abbey in Saint-Jean-Do down in the Alps. And of course right at the beginning there, the uh, Jardin d'Etretat um, was absolutely lovely too. One or two little gifts. Um, but let's, uh, let's pop over to the costings and have a little bit of a detailed look at that. The ferry in total was uh, 325. That was for us and Peggy the scooter. So in total, that the scooter, the trailer is about 1.6 meters out from the back of the van. So it makes us just about nine meters overall. And because it's such a small trailer with that side load, um, you don't really pay a premium at all for that. So that's quite handy. I got a post office travel insurance for a single trip one. Um, and that was 60 odd quid. And then, as you can see there, we've got the start of a breakdown of uh, the campsites that we booked and stayed at. Um, the biggest cost there was that stop at uh, Verdal, which was um, about nine nights there. Um, Camping Municipal de Verdal, that was at, in the Arcachon Basin that... Um, that was such a lovely part, particularly in that incredible weather that we had throughout the whole journey. In fact, absolutely amazing. Um, but if you see down here, if I just bring it down a bit further, um, we could you can see that motorway we got onto by accident um, as we came back north towards uh, Dieppe. 
it was that bit of new motorway where you there are no toll booths as such. You merely drive onto the motorway, it AMPRs your number plate, and then you have to either have a tag which pays it straight away, or you have to pull in um, or go online when you get to your destination and just log into that system and pay your toll. And as you can see, it was only a couple of quid for us. Um, so in total, the accommodation, 573 on our various campsites that we saw there and that you saw us at. Um, we only paid 11 quid in parking. Some of that was obviously at the gardens of Etretat. Um, and then 2,485 miles was the total mileage of that trip. Um, on Peggy, we did uh, 422 miles, not quite as much as the last time we were out on it, where we did over a thousand, I think. Um, but a fair few um, trips out on Peggy the scooter, which was absolutely brilliant. Really, it's a real game changer, that is, um, and has allowed us uh, a lot more range. And getting around from the campsites uh, been a really useful addition to the, uh, to the touring rig. Um, so in diesel, in total, for that 2485, 735 quid. Um, and Peggy was a mere 42 quid um, for, for the petrol that uh, the scooter takes. Um, the groceries, therefore, which was the total of that, um, ver that uh, addition to the spreadsheet where I've uh, just kept a track of the groceries here, um, that equated to um, 529 quids worth. But then, as I say, we did quite a bit of, um, quite a bit of uh, uh, dining out, which, uh, which was, of course, lazy because we didn't cook. But, uh, but of course, great fun. Um, some of that with our eldest and her, uh, and her partner and with some friends we met up with. So it's just got to be done, hasn't it? Um, occasional treat out, uh, but in total that came to 598 over the time we were there. Um, the days out, all those various bits from the chateaus and the boat trips and all that, 192 quid. Um, I initially changed some sterling or from the post office, got some euros out, got 304 quids worth of euros. Um, and we only had to pay a relatively small amount for laundry because uh, we obviously had access to our eldest daughter's um, house and washing facilities. So that was great. Our thanks to her for allowing us to get sorted with a load of laundry. <laughs> and, um, but apart from that, about 12 quid on laundries on the various campsites. Um, the data. So we were obviously traveling for about six, seven weeks, but that uh, in, in effect, let's call it two months worth of data payment. Use that Poppet SIM, which for £25 per month gives you uh, 100 gigabytes per month for that 25 quid. All usable in Europe, all 100 gigabytes usable in Europe. That, so that is a really good um, a really good offer because lots of them uh, don't allow you uh, such a use. And... Um, so therefore 50 quid in total. So if we just scroll down a little bit, here's some of the key figures there for the total. Um, the total for everything that we did, including all those, uh, all that dining out and gifts and all that, 348.984 over that time, six odd weeks away, that equates 91 pound a day. But what I did as well, which I, mentioned there um, I just tried to do a sort of basic view of it so diesel ad blue accommodation as we've uh, as we've seen the ferry crossing our groceries and euros and that strips back to 2649 so you know if you lived uh, if you did a lot more catering uh, for yourself or of course barbecuing in that amazing weather um, then uh, you could have probably got away with as low as, you know, just under or on and around £60 a day as a guide, all in everything, you know, and remember that includes ferry, travel insurance, diesel, petrol, you name it. Um, that's absolutely everything. So, um, so yes, an interesting trip. And of course, that also includes, I have to say, that also includes um, the price, includes the 124 quid that we paid 
uh, and the sights in the UK. So what, 150, 180 quid. That includes 180 quid's worth of sights in the UK. So again, you could take uh, you could take out those uh, pop-up sites at the NEC and the Gatwick and the Birmingham site. You could take that out of that figure, um, you know, which would uh, which would take you down to about three 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 point three k, um, or even lower on that one. So interesting indeed. Um, useful to keep track of it. That's not far off, incidentally. That figure that's very similar to some of our previous journeys um, over the water. In our earlier trip in 2023 in May, that was actually a little bit higher. We were about £101 a day um, as we travelled on that occasion. So, uh, so just come down a little bit there. And finally then, in terms of the travel itinerary, there we have the rundown of, uh, of how we travelled and how many nights we stayed in, in which place, right from the start there to New Haven. Longest we were anywhere was the uh, camping municipal at uh, Arcachon Basin um, at 163, which was a great price, wasn't it, um, for one of those municipal camping sites, and very nice that was too. But then, um, uh, and then we obviously made our way across past that incredible little settlement and town of Rocamador. Um, and then on uh, across to Morzine, the Edda Camping, another free stop. Um, then as we left Morzine, those two again, those free airs at Giblet and Germany des Prés, um, that lovely light show in at Chartres, back to our favourite stop near, um, near Dieppe ferry port, which was Van Angerville sur Mer, uh, again that uh, little free park up, which is lovely. Before, of course, heading back into good old Blighty and uh, onto that site at Gatwick, then into Birmingham at Chapel Lane, and then finally uh, three nights at the pop up site at the NEC. So, about 37 days, I think that is, about 37 days uh, in total for uh, this amazing autumn adventure. Um, hope that's a little insight into some of the costs is of use to you guys. Um, of course, if you've got any more questions about any of that, then uh, please do uh, drop it in the comments below. As I say, two map links for you in the description below, which uh, just show the two halves of that journey as a rough guide to, uh, to where we were and how we travelled around France. Um, but that was a look at the data. Well... That was it. I bet you, well, I'm surprised you're actually still awake because I've been talking spreadsheets and it's not, well, it's not your favourite subject, is it? No, well, I do, oh, no, to be fair, I do like a good spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, some interesting costs there, weren't there? So if you've been planning or thinking of doing uh, something similar in France uh, and you've got the luxury of having five or six weeks, um, then there are some truly amazing places there. Highlights? What do we think? Highlights? Well, it was... So hard, isn't it? It is hard. Highlights. Yeah, I mean, the, the airs, the free airs that we stayed in, yeah. were all actually, um, each one of them were, um, I'd go back to, I thought they were very good. Yeah, they were. Yeah. They were nice, yeah. And some of those lovely said Even the electric at uh, Giblet, wasn't it? Yeah. Amazing with those, um, with those crazy cows. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, and then I suppose my... One of my favourite campsites was when we stayed at um, Camping Municipal de Verdal in oh, yeah. Arachon. Um, beautiful yeah. beach there called Plage de la Hume. Um, really enjoyed swimming across the, uh, the little tributary that came in to mm. the uh, marina there. Remember we put the drone up there, didn't we, on that uh, estuary there? That was yeah, that, that was lovely. So if you're in that yeah. area, that area of, um, on the west coast of France, then I thoroughly recommend going there. Mm. It, was, it was peaceful, the beaches were beautiful, the water was really warm um, yeah, back, back in late September. So yes. um, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was lovely. It was, because that, um, you remember, that Arcachon Bay is sort of um, just protected um, by that spit of sand, massive dune de pilat, um, which makes Arcachon Bay itself and that campsite, the, well, the water was absolutely amazing. It was, absolutely yeah. lovely, yeah. Lovely yeah. stop. Because essentially Arcachon is, forms part of a big basin, mm. and um, so it's almost like a separate sea, uh, yeah. very calm. Yeah, it was, it yeah. was. Um, 
Well, I I reckon the chateau, you know. I am um, because I do love a bit of a garden. You do. do love a bit of a garden and Chateau Valandry, well, that was just incredible. Um, I've got uh, I quite a few works, chateaus earmarked uh, for our future travels in France because they are just amazing. But I have to say, Chateau Valandry would take some beating. That garden was unbelievable. It was. So, yeah. um, and obviously that's the Loire Valley. So if, uh, if you're lucky enough to have a bit more time than we had... Um, to go static in, in and around the Loire and try and take in three, four, five of the chateaus because there are a few around there, then um, just to the west of Tours City, then that was uh, that was absolutely amazing for Andrew. Loved that. Yeah. But of course, lots of highlights. And of course, our fabulous eldest daughter. That was a highlight as well. Well, that was the highlight. To be yes. Fair. See, um, their new six, place down in, uh, down in the Alps. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so stay tuned, folks, because we'll be going yeah. um, abroad again very soon. Yes, we're and, booked, uh, we're booked. We're booked, we're booked on the ferry, yeah. um, and uh, hopefully bring you some more wonderful scenery and um, ideas for you. Yes, love this trip. Very much loved having you along, guys. Thanks ever so much for uh, your subscriptions, for your comments, for your likes. Um, it really has been fun having you along, and we're very grateful for that. And as Nikki says, we will see you on the road again very soon. We will indeed. Cheers, guys. See you soon. Bye.